Uh, speaking of canceled, do you guys want to hear some sad, more sad news? Yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite. The, the upcoming, uh, if you were excited to see more Rocket Lab launches, those were canceled for the time being. Oh. <sighs> uh, because unfortunately, Rocket Lab experienced their first in-flight failure. Um, I guess operational because technically, and I will admit that the pedants were, were technically right that the, of course the first electron ever didn't make it to orbit and therefore that mission failed, but the hardware, like the rocket itself was fine. It's just that it lost ground telemetry. So therefore they had to destroy the rocket mm. in the very first launch ever. So, I mean, technically this isn't the first electron to fail, you know, that electron technically failed. Um, but this is the first one with customers payloads. This is the 13th launch of the electron. And basically what happened is um, it's just everything was going great. <laughs> everything was going great. And um, and all of a sudden it's ironic because the mission is the mission name was picks or it didn't happen. <laughs> it's very unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing to cut was the video feed. So, Oops. yeah, this just April sad. Fools. I know. I, uh, I, I feel so bad for him because I think this might wonder if this will make them reconsider their naming schemes. Um, but the reason it had this is because the reason it was named this is because there's a ton of cameras on board. There's um, Canon Electronics and and some from, I think, uh, I don't remember the uh, uh, crap, <laughs> Planet Labs or something. What, one, of the, one of the other um, observation, a uh, planet, there we go, yeah, um, had awesome, awesome little CubeSats that have like huge apertures, really high resolution images or Im imaging satellites that they're working on a little constellation. So this was carrying some cool camera equipment to space. So the Pixar didn't happen thing was a very clever name. Uh, unfortunately, it came back and bit them. Um, oh, and Faraday also had a, yeah, thank you. Faraday also had um, a satellite on board. But now here's, here's where this all went wrong. Um, yeah, uh, so we're seeing that the video feed is kind of intermittently cutting out, which, which was unusual in the first place. I hadn't ever really seen a Rocket Lab mission that would do that word, like drop frames like that. Um, I don't think that has anything to do with the failure. But don't forget, the Electron runs on electric pumps. This is basically like the Tesla of rockets, you know, where it's um, using electric motors to spin mm. the pumps that, that, that then run the engines as opposed, to, uh, as opposed to running a gas generator or some kind of chemical reaction to spin the pumps. Um, and what they had to do, though, in order to maintain the, the second stage burns for like six minutes. And in order to maintain six minutes of, of spinning a high power pump, they have to take and swap batteries. So they do what's called a hot swap. And of course, at first it was assumed that the failure, here we go, that's, that's where it failed. All of a sudden the video feed just completely stopped. The speed started decreasing. The altitude is still going up because it was still approaching apogee. And then all of a sudden the altitude begins to drop. So they, they maintained um, telemetry. So you can see in the corner, it's still showing the numbers. Telemetry um, was maintained, which, which kind of lets us know it, it likely didn't just explode. It's not like this thing just blew up in the sky, most likely. Um, but it's, it's more assumed that it lost thrust. Um, and yeah, next thing you know, the speed is increasing quite a bit, and it's dropping out of the sky, basically. And it's, it's increasing speed now because it's falling. Mm. So... Unfortunately, this likely fell about a thousand kilometers downrange, and uh, all the payloads on board were were lost. And um, so, it, yeah, early speculation, of course, was, oh, this had to have been, um, you know, they're saying like, oh, everything's, we still have telemetry. Uh, sorry that we lost video feed. You know, they, and people, of course, were like, oh, they were lying. How dare they lie? That's not the intent. It's like it's real time. They, you they don't have the answers yet. Like, settle down, people. Uh, they're like, I didn't, I'll never trust Rocket Lab again. They were telling us everything was fine when not everything was fine. It's like, stop it. <laughs> if you ever misspeak, I will never trust you again. Yeah. Like, they're I feel sorry for that guy because he's just kind of like, uh, we don't know what's um Right. Just hang on. We're going to get a... Hmm. Yeah. And they're hoping that they just lost telemetry. Like, this stuff happens. You lose ground links, you know. Um, and it, exactly, uh, Andrew in our in our Discord says, and also the broadcast knows even less. Like they know less than Mission Control. You know, like Mission Control sitting there, yeah. they might have some info, but like they're not they're they're sitting there trying to work the issue. They're not going to be like, hey, host, make sure and tell them that the, at yeah, five yeah. minutes and twenty two seconds we had a decreased thrust and a hundred and ten volts and it went down to you know whatever. Like, no, 
they're not going to be doing that. They're going to be focusing on the mission and not trying to update the webcast host on every little thing that they've, you know, they're currently observing. So we still don't actually have answers really, but Rocket Lab did release a statement. Um, and one of the interesting notes, and this is something that Scott Manley has an awesome video on, um, they, he noticed that in this, uh, in this release, they mentioned that um, approximately four minutes into flight, they were experiencing uh, problems with their upper stage. And publicly, we didn't really notice anything until um, until uh, we didn't really notice anything until f like five minutes. And and the battery's hot swap is I think like five minutes and forty seconds normally, or around five and a half minutes is when that hot swap is or is supposed to occur. And on their their own press release, they say approximately four minutes into flight, um, the issue occurred approximately four minutes into flight on July fourth, twenty twenty, and resulted in the safe loss of the vehicle. As a result, the payloads on board. So it's just interesting that they, in their own press release, note approximately four minutes, which then made people think, you know, start speculating maybe something was already awry during the second stage burn. Um, this led people to maybe, and this probably is a pretty fair speculation. If it has two batteries running at once. Um, and then the third battery that, that will take over after the two batteries are depleted, there's the potential that one of those batteries was severely underperforming and they were noticing the voltage drop, you know, at four minutes and the secondary battery, the second battery was continuing to power it all the way. But once it got to the point where it just fell short of electric charge, you know, because one battery was underperforming. Um, and Scott Manley noted that there was um, a portion of time where there is decaying thrust and then virtually no thrust based on the telemetry. Now, the only thing is he doesn't show the, the, the seconds here. So this decay and thrust could just be literally like, I, I think he said a couple seconds of decay thrust. That could just be this pump spinning down, you know, like losing power and, you know, kicking out, you know, over two seconds. That sounds about right. Like, oh, we lost power, you know. <laughs> type of thing so it, it's hard to tell um we're waiting at this point to hear more and for rocket lab to do an investigation uh again this was on saturday the 4th that this happened it does have to be like approved by the faa what they their findings and um because they Why? that's part of their launch license like you but know they the launch out of new zealand yeah the faa has uh jurisdiction over like all rocket launches, I think, or at least it's a technically it's a U.S. What? launch company. Yeah, they I know they have to get a launch license from the FAA. So what about the Soyuz? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> well, if you're putting American astronauts on it, maybe. But like, yeah, we're just going to drop this first stage in Kazakhstan <laughs> somewhere. Whatever. FAA is like, yeah, cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. I, and China obviously probably doesn't have jurisdiction with the FAA. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I could imagine. Yeah, President Xi is on the phone. Um, he'd like to <laughs> launch a rocket. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't I, think. Yeah, I don't think China's calling us asking for permission. I I don't actually know how it works though, but there is definitely some something though. I don't really know honestly. That's odd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. So they'll have to do a full investigation, and you know, even when SpaceX SpaceX has had two complete losses of vehicles. Um one on ascent and one on the pad and each of those took about six months for them to get back now the interesting thing here it, it could be six months it could be quicker it could be who knows <laughs> um the good thing is uh, these the electron is wired up i think more than any other rocket they have more data and if it's it, depending on what the issue is you know they already have the hardware for like six more rockets on the table already like pretty much ready to go they were really ramping up for a rapid increase in launch cadence so it's hard to tell how long this will take for them to get their feet, you know, back on the ground. I'm hoping um, sooner rather than later. I really hope we still see more launches from them this year. But yeah. Does is... that mean it's they're delayed for at least until this investigation is over? Yes. Yep. Oh, they, wow. Yeah. They won't launch again until um, this is all cleared and they know the issue and they have fixed the issue on any upcoming vehicles. Hmm. Yeah. But the good thing is like stuff like this, uh, it, it really sucks, but it. Uh, there's a few things like I think it ends up making a better vehicle overall because some of these unknowns, you know, there's the unknown unknowns that don't pop up until they do. And then you know about an issue and maybe in finding this issue, they end up discovering other things that they could tweak and make better and more reliable and safer and 
and who knows, make improvements on the vehicle. But also overall, like when you have a team um, that has never experienced failure at all, um, then it's not like they get cocky, but it, it might be easy to forget the, you know, the, the depth of, of your work, you know? Wasn't so, that kind of what happened with the space shuttle? There was some yeah. kind of overconfidence there and And I'm not saying that they were even overconfident, but you know, that I, was I like didn't, launch fever, isn't it? They call it launch fever. I don't think rocket lab had any signs of, of launch fever. No. Um, you know, um, but I, I do think there's something about, you know, if you're working and you're young, you're, you know, you're, you're 24 years old, you, you, you're excited about your job, you're doing your best, obviously, and all that stuff. But maybe you haven't had the full, you know, it hasn't totally clicked the implications of every time you touch a bolt of the mission criticality, you know, and now yeah. all of a sudden we're going to Billions have an entire, yeah. And now we have uh, an entire company, all, everyone under that roof and under the, all their roofs are now like, very aware of the potent potential for failure. And I, I'll bet it will make a better company. It will bring them together. Yeah. It'll make a better rocket. It'll make a more mature and uh, ready to go company. Really considering they had 12 successful launches in a row at the very beginning of the company yeah. of their, of their service. Yeah. It's been impressive I'm surprised to me. that there has to be the whole investigation thing has to be wrapped up. I mean, I, I guess it's just my, lack of understanding of how regulated this space is because I mean, I, I don't know if I, if I had a truck and the engine blew up, but I was using it for my own thing. That's like on me. You know what I mean? Like, like as a company, i I would have imagined that they could just decide, Oh yeah, we figured it out. We fixed it. You know, my customers may be the ones that don't trust me or the insurance companies or whatever. But I, I, I did imagine that there was actually like some kind of laws or regulations in place for that. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say like probably an insurance thing. I mean, if I mean the, these satellites are tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of equipment, and you know if if the insurance company is a hundred percent have doesn't a hundred percent have trust in the launch service, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm surprised there is insurance here. I mean, it just seems like <clears throat> my experience with insurance companies is their their general stance is how can we not pay for anything, and <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, well, you, you didn't, you didn't account for uh, wind properly. Well, mm -hmm. sorry, we're not going to pay that claim. You know, I could just right. imagine like the, the list of ways to get out of paying right. a claim on something like this are a mile long. There's just, or, you know, two, two kilometers long or something, you know, it's just a <laughs> dumb thing. 1.6 like, kilometers long. Uh, I always get kilometers and kilograms confused. That's my problem. <laughs> um, but I should reiterate though, just so those screaming at your whatever you're listening or watching us on that likely these these satellites probably weren't in anywhere near the hundreds of millions just because of the yeah. types of satellites they are. You know, they're uh, I'm still guessing some of them w were well over the million or maybe even five million mark for some of the satellites. But um, you know, but the, some of the you know some satellites like James Webb Space Telescope Ooh. that's well over a billion, probably getting closer to two billion now. If that thing fails, mm -hmm. we're all in big trouble. Like that's there's going to be a lot of clinched butts next year when that thing goes up. <sighs> if it's next year, even I'm hearing well, twenty. That reminds me already. of the headline. I think I shared it with you guys in our chat. It was like uh, China launches two satellites in in four days. <laughs> I was like, is this is this supposed to be impressive for some reason? <laughs> I feel like SpaceX launches sixty satellites in one shot. <laughs> like well, <what> you <laughs> well two launches back to back are, are pretty is still pretty an, a, an impressive thing yeah but oh okay yeah just the, the way the headline read i was like uh you know <laughs> china launches two satellites and elon musk laughs or something right <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash yt. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks everybody.